praise the Lord, welcome. Uh, as we get into the word, let's bow our heads and close our eyes in prayer. Father, we thank you that your word, Lord, your word comes from you and you alone. You are the author of the word, you are the inspiration behind the word, you are the Lord, you are the uh, one who makes us understand your word. We pray that your wisdom will prevail today, Lord. Your understanding will prevail, Lord Jesus. Not my thoughts, but your thoughts will be understood by everyone who is hearing, Lord Jesus. We want to commit this time into your hands. You be glorified. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> As you see, when you go uh, to see nature, the best thing that people like are the valleys. Yes, mountains are beautiful, but they're difficult to climb. But everybody likes the valleys. The many organized tours to the valleys, it brings out a sense of creation or the awesomeness of God. One of the most beautiful national park, um, uh, valleys is the in the Banff National Park. I have a picture for you. It's called the uh, Valley of Ten Peaks. It's a beautiful valley. There's another one in Norway called Romsdalen, and that's a beautiful valley. You see how beautiful it is. You see, just by looking at these pictures, your heart feels a pleasant uh, feeling in your heart about the beauty of nature. A valley looks good from the height, but it takes a lot of effort to go through the valley and climb up the mountain. King David talks about valleys. And in Psalm 23, 4, he says, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This is one of our today's texts. We are talking about valleys, that Christian and the valley. That is the title today. The Christian life in the valley. The valley of shadow of death is actually a valley, it is called Wadi Kelt. If you see the picture here, uh, go back one JP by, you will see the ah. This is the actual val valley of the shadow of death. This is a 27 kilometer long road from Jerusalem to Jericho. It is called the valley of the shadow of death. There is danger of falling, there is danger of wild animals and danger of thieves in the caves along the valley. You see, uh, Romans built a road uh, there after that, but before that, it was a very um, uh, necessary road, but it was fraught with dangers. It was very steep, and the shepherds used to take their flocks through it, through on the way to the fields. David is speaking of a deep, dark valley. He's talking, he's taking the example of a uh, valley and talking about the valley of shadow and death, how God can keep us through it all. Lord Jesus used the same road from Jericho to Jerusalem to give the example of the good Samaritan. See, you, he is talking about a valley going through the valley of the shadow of death. There is a shadow of death when you are passing through the valley. Valleys are not closed dead end streets. There are the disappointments, the frustrations, the discouragements, the problems in life through the valleys are not disasters. When we read the life of David, he went on to become a king. But before that, for many years, he was chased from place to place by Saul. It was an experience which David did not know when it will end. He was chasing, he was chased not by an enemy, but by his own father-in-law. It was the anointed of the king and David could not even retaliate back against the king. He knew what was the going through the valley of the shadow of death. See, you see the, in the Bible when you read it, the valley uh, is, the <clears throat> is the only way to reach our promised land. There is no alternative route. When Israelites were chased by the Egyptians, the only way was through the Red Sea, not the way around it. But God made a way for them to cross the Red Sea. We must always keep in mind that even in the valley, the Lord will make a way for us. 
we must keep in mind his grace his leading his mercy will never come to an end his way may not be the way we think it is but he, it is his way is the correct way he may sometimes do opposite of what we expect you know many times christians have this habit this bad habit of telling god what to do they tell god this is the way you should do it they in prayer they try to instruct him what he should be doing instead of submitting to him and going in the way he wants us to lead he wants to lead us we when we journey through the valley we sometimes question god we tend to question god like the israelites we murmur we grumble we moan we start to doubt god's power and we start to compare our start to compare ourselves with other christian see that christian how nice he is he looks he's smiling or she looks she's smiling see my life i am going through this all the time looks like i am the only one chosen to go through this valley that's the wrong attitude towards god my dear brothers and sisters to bring the valley into perspective into perspective i will have to speak about the hills and the mountains valleys and mountains go together the bible talks about mountains the mountain is usually considered a place of revelation to have a mountain top experience means that you have received some sort of inspiration or vision from god it does not mean that you are happy it does not mean that your bills are paid that you have very little worries the mountain top experience is where a christian meets god it's called a mountain top experience we hear the rhema word of god and we see the promised land we all love being on the mountain top a place to know god's presence we all want to see god face to face we all want to talk to god we all wants to want to see the vision but my dear brothers and sisters the way to the mountain is through the valley the valley is the experience that you should be looking for a normal christian experiences both the mountain top experience and the valley experience we do so because god wants to sort out and remove all the impurities in our lives the truth is sometimes we spend longer in the valley than on the mountain top the valley is different from the mountain top there is joy and exhilaration in the mountain top in the valley our dependence is on the lord in the many battles most battles are fought in the valley and where feelings are hurt attitudes are developed the valley is a place where we struggle very day every day with painful circumstances the valley for us is inevitable because we find that god puts us through the valley for various reasons it may be spiritual war warfare it may be that our attitude towards some others have to change or because of our own rebellion various reasons god wants to put us through the valley it is the mountain top where we come to meet god but it is the valley where god comes and walks with us hallelujah it is the mountain top where we come to meet god but it is the valley where god comes and walks with us hallelujah the valley is a lonely experience sometimes your husband or wife may not even know you are going through it take the example of job's wife you know she did not have a clue what job job was going through she was only seeing the result of what he was going through in job 29 she said then said his wife unto him that is job does thou re- retain still retain thine integrity curse god and die can you blame her i wouldn't blame her all her children were dead now her husband had lost all his money and now he was struck with a skin disease what else she will tell him she said he hoped if he cursed god god would strike him dead and that way he will be re- he will be relieved from the suffering you know when you are going through the valley experience it is a one on one with god it's a very precious experience many people don't like the valley experience but today i want to encourage you the valley is the most precious lesson we can learn in our lives lord jesus went through this valley experience he was hated of all men at the lowest point of his life 
When he was arrested, everyone ran away, leaving him alone. <clears throat> As Christians, we will learn more from the valley experience than from the mountain top. We will, we will learn that the God of the mountain is also the God of the valley. In fact, the mountain top experience is a reward for successfully going through the valley. There is, I can even say to a point that there is no mountain top experience without the valley experience. That is why today Christians don't want to suffer, don't want to go through valley, don't want to go through disappointments, don't want to go through loss, but they want the mountain experience. That's why many don't experience God at all. Valley is God's training ground. The Bible talks about many valleys. We just saw the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death. The second type we are seeing, going to see, is the valley of weeping. The Bible says, Psalm 84, 6, Who passing through the valley of Baca, make it well, make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. Baca means weeping in Hebrew. <clears throat> the verse reads, if you in complete English, those who passing through the valley of weeping make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. Now, of course in this verse, the psalmist is talking about somebody. Who is he talking about? We want to see. He says, who passing through the valley? You know, he is referring to somebody. So let's go to Psalm 84, 4 and 5. It says like this, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will be still praising thee, Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of men. Then continues verse 6, Who passing through the valley of weeping. The Christians who are able to pass through, who are able to sustain the... Uh, being sustained by God through this valley of weeping, they are the people who dwell in the house of God, who are praising God. And second thing, whose strength is in the Lord and who in whose strength are the scripture ways. What does dwelling in his house mean? What does it mean to dwell in God's house? Dwell means living in the house of God. King David says, again in Psalm 23, 6, he says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Again he says, Psalm 27, 4 One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. When you are dwelling with the, in the house of the Lord, you are praising him. In, in the New Testament, we today are the temple of God, temple of the Holy Spirit. How often do we, do we rest our spirit in this temple and behold the beauty of God? We are so busy with so many things in our life, whether it is leisure, whether it's movie, whether it is a trip, whether it is business, whether it is work, so many things we are busy. We don't find time to sit and dwell in the temple of God. The presence of God is not a physical presence, my dear brothers and sisters. It's not a physical presence. It's not something, oh, you will feel like shock going through. That is not the presence of God. Presence of God, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You are inner spirit man who has come alive after being born again should experience this presence of God. We should be consumed by His presence, consumed by the desire to know Him, to stay in His presence. Lord Jesus said, John 11, 25, He said, I, John, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. When we, when we dwell in His temple, when we dwell in His presence, we are in the presence of life, the ultimate life, the one who gives life, that is God. It is God who has given life to every human being, every creature in this, in the, on, in, on this earth. And Lord Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And when we are in his presence, 
the spirit man is renewed is renewed and becomes stronger and stronger remember isaiah 40 31 what does it say but they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint many times in our christian life we come to a point where we cannot run we cannot um, you know uh, read the word we have told god oh lord i will read five chapters a day but we will stop when we come for prayer lord i pray every day 15 minutes but we can't do it we come to a stop what you need to do you need to stop everything and go in the presence of god because in his presence is what life it will renew you they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength waiting on the lord and dwelling happens in the spiritual realm a christian needs to subject his body you need to train your body to sit still to train your mind reading god's word to meditate on god's word to to allow you to dwell in the presence of god when we go back to psalm 84 4 and 5 he uh, is listing the qualifications of the people who go through the valley of weeping. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will be praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, whose heart are the ways of them. You see Psalm 28, 7, David says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will I praise him. The Lord, uh, David relied on the Lord. God was his strength. Such Christians whose strength is the Lord, who are, are the people in whose heart his ways will always be leading them. Uh, it is the meaning of that verse, Psalm 8, uh, 84, 6, are the ways of him means that the ways of God rules our heart. Such people, such Christians, they pass through the valley of weeping. You know, going through the valley of shadow of death, I call it passing high school. If you pass the high school, God will allow you to walk through this valley. My dear brothers and sisters, it is a reward because it will sh He will walk with you. He will show you how strong He is. He will lead you. And now, if you graduate from high school, now this is the degree. It is the valley of weeping. My dear brothers and sisters, valley of weeping you know what is more precious in god's sight he keeps our tears in a bottle he doesn't collect many other things from us he collects what our tears so you see that's very important for him you know what that verse says in 84 6 they walk past through the valley of uh, baka and they make it a well now what is a well my dear brothers and sisters for we have, you will see that in Proverbs 10, 11, the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Going through the valley of weeping, the Christian will come out like a well of life. Out of such Christian shall flow living waters. The rain of the living water will cover all the pits in the valley. It is the work of the Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters. So what happens when they go through this valley? What happens on the other side? Psalm 84, 7, the Bible says, They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. So when you go through the valley of weeping, you go from strength to strength. You go from strength to strength. So, you know, if you avoid the valley of weeping, the strength is, is you know, it doesn't give you that strength to strength experience. It is the valley of weeping that God takes you through. We are going to see more about this valley in, as we go forward. But as you go through the valley of weeping, the other side, you come out with greater strength. And you appear at, and every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. You are, you are straight away in the presence of the, you live in the presence of God. Because before the valley of weeping, you decided to stay in the, dwell in the temple. Then you go through the valley of weeping, your reward will be the presence of God. What a glorious truth. We all need the experience of the constant presence of God. We have to live in the presence of God. It is not just a Sunday experience. 
oh sunday people will come oh they will sing some praises and pastor will say oh god's presence is here everybody will think oh god's presence is here mentally no that's not what it is my dear brothers and sisters if you don't know the presence of god in the weekday you will never know him on sunday my dear brothers and sisters if you don't know him in the weekdays you will not know him on sunday we all want to do great exploits for god just like shadrak meshach the bandigo we want to be thrown in the fire but there is a value of weeping before that we want to be in the lions den and see the lions mouth closed but there is a value of weeping before that we all want like paul to be in the prison and sing sing songs in prison but there's a value of weeping before that those experiences come as a result of the value of weeping it comes as a result of graduation from college my dear brothers and sisters we have seen the value of shadow of death we have seen the valley of weeping now we come to the valley of vision this is post graduation in christian life post graduation isaiah 22:5 the bible says for it is a day of trouble and of treading down and of perplexity by the lord of god of hosts in the valley of vision breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains Isaiah here if you see Isaiah 22 he's crying for the deliverance of his people the valley of vision is a vision that sees bondage and uh, walls around his people the breaking he, he cries for the breaking down of the walls and for the and crying to the mountains from hell, for help we saw some um, 121 it says I lift up mine eyes unto the hills from when cometh my help my help comes from the lord who made heaven and earth remember that psalm the idea is that god is greater than the mountains i look up to see where my help comes from it comes from the lord this vision will drive will allow us to see around you will see uh, will help us to see around us i isaiah was burdened with the bur- destruction of his people not with the swords of other armies because of the stiff neckedness and the disobedience of israelites god called them to fasting and sackcloth but they were partying instead of obeying god this is the valley some christians go through they are crying for their other christians crying for other brothers and sisters for revival most revivals in the world which has in the history of the church started through such valleys my dear brothers and sisters this is the valley of the vision the burden which you cannot shake up the burden in which you will cry you will pray for breaking down of walls and you will cry to the lord god almighty this is this is the first revivals in america uh, broke out and impacted the world from united states the revival spread to ireland scotland wales england europe south africa and india australia and the pacific islands there has been no equal for the revival which started in 1857 in america even the ships coming from britain were told of the revivals in america ireland soon started to have a prayer meeting people started to get this vision of people dying without christ so they started to pray they they started to pray for years and then there was suddenly there was crowds there were crowds coming to receive christ there was open open air meetings when john kenes preached in belfast in ireland in 1859 there was never such a revival people just started to kneel down and re- repent for their sins and asking god and they and you know what he said i kane said nature does not contain an epidemic so like the conversion of the christian it was the christian conversion was more than the any epidemic till then imagine if p- more people were saved than the covid infections how wonderful it will be but that was the state in england so when andrew bonar of scotland heard it he found himself rolling on the ground and weeping before god in um, september 10th in 1959 he wrote 1859 he wrote <coughs> 
July 3rd, he wrote, Again this night, in the sorrow of my heart over the terrible carelessness, just like Isaiah, indifference, deadness of this valley of bones. Oh my God, come over to Scotland, help us. Two months, Andrew Bonard cried and cried and cried. It's a vision, given the valley of vision. On 10th September, the breakthrough came. Every day he wrote in his diary, every day I heard of some soul being saved among us. All classes of people have become interested in salvation. Backsliders have turned. Conversions have increased. Christians desire more of the word of God. Family, families have established daily devotions. The, the bars and the, the drink houses have become empty. This is what happened. This is what happens when you receive the valley of the vision, my dear brothers and sisters. You see, ordinary people started to pray. The revival started when one man started a prayer meeting in New York. And it went on to become a great prayer meeting. And the revival spread to the many parts of the world. And ordinary people were used by God. Not celebrities, not the people in power, but ordinary people like you and me, God used. That is the valley of the vision. That is the valley of the vision. And, you know, <laughs> the results of the 1859, uh, the results were evident in many areas of, uh, of life, in evangelism, in missions, in social action. Many you know, lay people became Christian leaders. D.L. Moody, William Booth, Spurgeon, A.B. Simpson. New spiritual life was imparted to the dead church. That is, the real, that is the reality of the valley of the vision. A burden to pray. A vision to break down the walls. Cry out for revival. Christians today are so obsessed with so many things. So many things. Gifts of the spirit. I'm not necessarily non-scriptural things. They are obsessed with gifts of the things. They are obsessed with speaking in tongues. They are obsessed with falling down. They are obsessed with hundreds of other things. But who has the value of the vision, my dear brothers and sisters? You see, you, you know, everybody was going on with their life. Suddenly this COVID epidemic came. Everything came to a halt. Now my question to everyone is this. Listen to me carefully, my question. What did we do to the Lord when we had free time? What did we do different for the Lord when we had free time? Did we make ourselves you know, available for the Lord? If we don't do anything in the free time, how will we do when we are busy? It's a question only you can answer. We have seen three valleys. The valley of the shadow of death. The valley of, <clears throat> the valley of weeping. Then the valley of vision. The call today. What I'm going to tell you next is don't waste your valleys. The valleys are the most precious gift given by God. You know, one day a preacher had lost his whole family in a tragic fire. And he was in deep depression. And as he was walking down the street, he came across a church being built. And he stopped to see some of the working people. There was a worker who was busy with only one stone. He was shaping it, measuring it, shaping it, measuring it. So he asked what he was doing. The man said, do you see that small stone on the roof, the empty place? I want to fit this stone there. That's why I'm carving it. <clears throat> Immediately God spoke to the preacher and he said, this is what I'm doing with my life, with your life. He came to realize what God was doing. It was God's way of carving him to fit him in that place. We live in the world that is filled with people just like this preacher. There are people all around us. Maybe you are going through it. Depression, despair, hopelessness, defeat. I want to preach this rest of the message is to encourage you. I know that many in our church and community are going through difficult times. I want to encourage you and challenge you. I don't want you to waste your valley. I know many people don't, want, don't believe this, but God is in charge of every single thing in your life. 
nothing nothing can happen in your life without god uh, allowing it psalm 37 23 the bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and he delighteth in his way you see god controls the direction of every christian when you come to the lord you are not only giving your life to the lord but everything surrounding you has is controlled by god he controls the valleys he makes he determines how deep they should be he determines how long they should be and he will he will also tell you and he also decides how difficult it must be he sends this valley seasons in our lives to develop us to make us more like his son jesus christ and because god loves us he sends us in the valleys we would be foolish to disregard or get and des- be desperate to get out of the valleys you saw psalm 143 is a great psalm david wrote he wrote it um, many scholars say that when absalom came and chased him out of his out of jerusalem when he was going through that valley that's when he wrote in verse 3 for 143 3 he writes for the enemy hath persecuted my soul he hath spitten my life down to the ground he hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead the it was the pain of betrayal and it was the pain of depression god watches us as we go through that valley he sees how we react he sees oh this is what i needs to come out this is the valley you will go through what he is going to see are we going to depend on him or are we going to look to somebody are we going to look to somebody for prayer are we going there or are we going to rest in his strength that's what god is looking for are we sometimes we are even too proud to see that we are going through the valley in in when you read psalm 143 i encourage you to read um, in your own, own time the words overwhelmed that means it case it um, it brings the idea that he was covered with sorrow he was stunned he did not expect it to happen david cannot believe what has happened to him many are walking in such valley today it is a it is a valley it is a pain there is pain in the valley my dear brothers and sisters there is pain without pain there is no gain i told you last week i am telling you again there is the valley is full of pain it's a pain of despair it's a pain of no hope david feels that he has reached the end of his rope and if god doesn't lift the veil of darkness he says he is no better than the people who is going down to the pit many are walking in the dark valley right now you know the valleys are a shared experience between believers in a way there are many believers many different type of valleys each of us go through different valleys there are valleys of sickness oh disease has struck then we start to say god why me and we react but don't waste your valleys i'll come to that there is the valley of death valley of financial turmoil valley of emotional distress valley of spiritual poverty and valley of marriage disturbance between husband and wife there are valleys that touch the body there are valleys that touch the soul there are valleys that touch the mind the valleys that touch the family there are valleys of every description in the world the one thing is sure that we all will go through the valleys the valleys of life are going to come our way whether we like it or not when they come we should remember the loving father with his hand is guiding us through it we must when we are going through the valley we have to look to the father not look through and to any other source we must not we must be careful not to waste the valley we should say lord thank you for the valley what do you want me to learn what should i learn in this valley so that i don't have to go through it again god wants to teach us while we are there it's our duty to learn the lessons if you are one of them who are walking through the valley there is hope for you today you may feel that life there is no hope in your life you think that disease is going to kill you the disease is going to be the end of you let me encourage you 
you see this Psalm 143, David was in a similar situation, but when you, when you are in the valley, God also gives you some prizes in the valley. The valley also brings some rewards, some good things. It brings us closer to God. When we, are, when we go through in the valley and the way God wants us to go through, we come closer to God. It, it, it causes us to rethink our relationship with God. We, anything that brings us closer to God is a reward. Hallelujah. You see, 143.5, David writes, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thine hands. In, when he was going through this valley, he remembered the days of old. He meditate on, meditated on the work of God. He remembered how God led Abraham. He remembered how God led Israelites. He remembered how he never let any word of Samuel fall to the ground. He, he, he remembered all of it. That is the way when you go through the valley, think about it. If you are going through sickness, think about the how God healed uh, people in the Bible out of sickness. We should meditate on God's word. Don't allow the, uh, you know, the valley to overcome you. You overcome the valley through the word of God. Rem when you are going through the valley, remember what God has done. Review your life. Read his word. Remember how he saved your soul, changed your life. Remember how he blessed you abundantly. It will refresh your heart and it will encourage to carry on. William Cowper is a great hymn writer. One day, one day he was so depressed and he called, you know those days in the 19th century there were only carriages, no automobiles. So he called one of those carriages and said, take me to the London Bridge. You know, he wanted to jump from the bridge and die. When the diver picked him up and started to take him to the bridge, there was suddenly big fog on London. So, the driver was riding round and round because he couldn't see where he was going. After, May, after a few hours, William Cowper was frustrated and he said, just stop the thing, I want to get out where I am now. And when he got out, he found he was in, in front of the door of his house. He realized that God has use for me. And then <laughs> he wrote that famous song, God works in mysterious ways. The valley brings us closer to God. Your valley has been designed specifically for you. And to cause to come an end of yourself. You have to, James has to end Christ has to begin. In your life it has to be like that. When you get there, when you find the valley, you, you, it will bring you to a place of total dependence on the Almighty God. See, you see, that is the price. The price of the valley brings us closer to God and it also brings us closer to depending on God. It was the furnace of persecution that Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego started to depend on God who controls even the fire. It was the um, valley of all what Daniel went through that when he was thrown in the lions then, God closed the mouth of the lions. He realized God who overrules the valley. It was in the valley of famine that Elijah and the widow found that Jehovah is Jehovah Jireh. And the disciples, Mary, Martha and so many others in the Bible have learnt that the valley is a place of pain and heartache, but it also leads us to be dependent on the Almighty God. You see, the greatest truth in the Bible is in Song of Solomon 2.1. Here, Lord Jesus is known as the lily of the valley. Hallelujah! Before you go into the valley, the lily is already there. He is there already. That is the beauty. He is the lily of the valley. Believers, you know, you, you will learn that it is in the valley that the tree grow the tallest. The tallest trees are not on the mountain. The tallest trees are in the valley. They will, uh, the believers will learn that that is where the grace of God is the strongest. His lessons are the most powerful. The valley is not to be wasted. It is to be searched for treasures and do not waste your valley. 
you see the other thing he gives pain it, there is pain in the valley there are rewards in the valley the third thing there are many blessings in the valley you know when you go through the valley you will learn the meaning of prayer just imagine prayer is not something you have to do there is not something that you got a list and you work through it prayer is something you are talking to a god who is like your friend you can pray resting in the confidence of god you will learn the blessing of prayer in the midst of all this psalm 143:8 david says cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning for in thee do i trust cause me to know the way wherein i should walk for will i lift up my soul to thee this is what valley will do this is what valley experience will do this is what we have to how we have to walk with god the valley will lead us to worship the valley will lead us to jo- rejoicing our hearts will overflow with joy it's a very strange thing the pain brings the joy in our heart it cannot just hold it is miraculous Luch- luther uh, bridges he wrote a song there is within my heart a melody you know he wrote this song after his whole house whole family and his house was destroyed in fire can you think about it how hard it will be horatio spafford wrote the song it is well with my soul it's a beautiful song you must see the words when all his four daughters sank on the in the ocean because the ship sank and he wrote this song after that all is well with my soul valley brings adoration of god if we cannot praise god when we are in the valley we may not even be praising him on the mountain top valley will teach us how to fill our heart with the things of god valleys have a make have a way of making us to refocus on god you see psalm 143:10 david writes teach me to do thy will for thou art my god thy spirit is good lead me into the land of uprightness valley experience makes us to focus on god walk with god <clears throat> summarizing the benefits the uh, the uh, benefits of valley are pain there is a closeness to god there is walking with god then there is praising god and you know when you pray you will become better at praying better at worship and you better at filling your heart with the ways of god so don't waste your valley whether it is the valley of sickness whether it is the family fam, valley of disease whether it is the valley of loss whether it is the valley of children trouble financial trouble work trouble anything i want to give you a list of seven things seven mistakes people make when they are dealing with the valleys they and it can cause us to miss or waste the valleys that god allows us in our life number 1 you waste your valley or your valley experience when you don't believe it was designed for you by god okay you will waste it when you realize when you don't believe that that valley is designed by god many times you think oh it is because of my fault i have gone through don't think like that my dear brothers and sisters yes who doesn't makes who doesn't commit sin but you see when you sin god uses that experience to teach a lesson he will lead us through the valley it it is not enough to say that god just uses uh, this uh, b- bad things in our life we must also acknowledge that he designs these things for us he he if he if he doesn't stop something going bad that means he wants us to learn f- from it second thing you will waste your valley or waste your value experience if you think that whatever you are going through is a curse not a gift you see we think that oh it is because of my own thing my generational curse my this my that no my dear brothers and sisters it is god's gift for us it is the tender mercies of god that he allows us to go go through it the third you waste your valley if you sp- spend too much time thinking about the valley not thinking about christ in the midst of the pain we are going through in midst of the loss we are going through in midst of the troubles we are going through we need to turn to god's word to look into his face for the help we need 
that is the third thing we do mistake the fourth thing you will waste your valley if you don't if it drives you into solitude away or you want to hide instead of allowing it to um, help others you know it may be god sent some things in your life so that you can help somebody else who is going through the similar thing you see when we cut ourselves off during our valley sessions it deprives us the opportunity of ministering to others you see philippians 226 a faphroditus gave his life for the philippians that's what paul writes he gave his life in you no know, philippians 226 yes for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that he had heard that he had sick philippians had heard that he was sick and faphroditus was striving day and night for them and he he was he was using the sickness that he was going through to help the philippians number 5 you will waste your value if you grieve as somebody who has no hope god uses our valley not only for us but also for us to help others who are going through similar situation you see if we grieve like the unbelievers if we get angry with god like unbelievers some people say oh i got really angry with god they think that it's a great thing have you heard of christian say that oh i got angry with god i i spoke to god and i said god this this is not the attitude of christians this is the attitude you should see lord what i need to learn what i need to learn i want to learn in first thessalonians 4:13 the bible says he he talks about um, but i would have you to be ignore not be not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them that are asleep that he sorrow not even as others which have no hope don't behave with the valley like how people unbelievers behave we should every experience we must ask god lord what is it you want me to learn number 6 you will waste your valley or valley experience if you treat sin as casually as you as anybody else the valley is a place of refinement it is the place where the fire will burn away the sin it is the valley experience will purge that sin away from us purge our change our attitude only if we submit to god if you if you take it very casually at the end of the valley we will not come out strength to strength we will not go through that valley then we will lose what god had intended for us number 7 you will waste your valley if you don't learn from it and teach others anything that happens in our life is not an accident god set us up where we are and allowed these things come to us come into our lives because of a reason let us use our time in the valley to depend on him to glorify him to praise him like paul did in the prison rejoice in him in the valley my question to you my dear brothers and sisters are you wasting your valley are you make it are you are you making it count everything count for the name of lord jesus christ are you able to come to the lord and talk to him about the suffering that you are going through or or the difficulty you are going through or the trouble you are going through how long will you wander away wander away in the valley lost it is time to acknowledge his hand in your life and say lord i submit to you allow my i want to allow my life to be ru- ruled by you how long will you keep the flesh and the devil from ben- from you benefiting from the valley you see the thief comes to kill steal and destroy when you are going through the valley of the shadow and death there are thieves like the samaritan like the man who was uh, he beaten when before the samaritan came don't be like the levite don't be like the priest but be like the samaritan the i think the man helped him because he would have gone through a similar situation the thief comes to kill steal and destroy don't allow him in the valley 
allow God to rescue you and rescue others. Don't allow this valley experience to be wasted in your life. And, and when you graduate from these small valleys, God will take you through the valley of weeping. Because you are the one who is dwelling in the house of the Lord. You are the one who is depending on the Lord for his strength. And when you go through the valley of Baca, you will make it a well. The well in which there is words of living water flowing from you. And after you come out of that, you will be going from strength to strength. Then God will bring you to that vision. The vision, you know, the, uh, the valley of the vision. Where you will see the barriers. You will see what needs to be broken. And God will use you to break those barriers. To break those boundaries. So that you can bring people to the Lord. You can set. You can through the power of the spirit. Set people free. For Christ's sake. Let's bow our head. Close our eyes. The Christian life is filled with valleys. But. God wants you to go through it. If you don't go through valleys, you will not gain the, the perspective of what God wants, to see, wants you to see in your life. Take a few minutes. Think about the times when we have wasted the valleys. We have thrown aside the experiences of God, the difficulties, the trials we have gone through. We have just shut we have just complained. We have mourned like the Israelites. If the Israelites had not complained in the Red Sea, or they had not complained at the Mara, or they had not complained for flesh, if they had submitted to the guiding of the Lord in the forty uh, in the years they were going, they went through the desert, they would have come out victorious. But what happened? They got the land, but they were not strong enough to keep it. They lost the land. We should not be like that, my dear brothers and sisters. Everything the Lord plans, everything the Lord designs for us, help us will help us to grow closer to Him. That is the plan, that is the motive, that is the mercy, that is the grace, and that is the love of our God. Let us submit to it and say, Lord, here I am. Whichever way you want me to go, I will go. Fill me with your ways. Help me to go through this graduation, Lord. We want to come to the valley of the vision. We want to be people who will make effective change, effective difference in the people around us. Thank you, Father. We don't want to be ordinary Christians. We want to be Christians whom you want us to be, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I commit everyone who has heard this message. Let us, Lord, understand and have the wisdom to see the valley. Help us to, Lord... Realize your, your great love for us, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, your guiding hand leads us in many ways. The valleys is one of the ways. Help us, Lord, not to neglect it, not to reject it, not to waste it. We thank you and I commit everything into your hands. You be glorified. Speak to every heart that this lesson will be learnt and they will glorify you. Thank you, Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.